Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. So this uh, video is a continuation of my discussions on food, specifically on the lack of planting in the U.S. at the moment. In the winter, we had a very strong trough of the jet stream persistently over the U.S., which made it a very cold winter and very snowy winter. And of course, this huge snowpack had to melt and saturated all of the soils. Then come the spring, you know, after it had all melted and we'd been getting storm after storm crossing the Midwest, you know, large part, huge, huge, vast areas of the U.S., storm after storm, uh, leading to huge numbers of tornadoes. But as far as the farmers are concerned, it's that it's just continued, continued to soak and saturate the field. So planting has been significantly delayed on seen in, in any previous year. It's a lot worse this year. And um, I'll, I've been talking also about um, other parts of the world where there's, you know, heat waves and droughts, which are starting to, um, you know, dryness, uh, especially, which are um, slowing uh, and delaying the crops grown in Canada, for example, the wheat and uh, Australia has been under heat waves. Um, and uh, droughts for quite a while, they, their, their, grain, their wheat crop basically failed and they had to import uh, wheat from Canada for the first time in, in about four decades. Europe is also having very cold, very wet weather, similar to what we're getting in the US, but not to the same extent. And this is delaying planting um, you know, of vegetables and things like that in Europe. So when you combine all of these different factors, uh, we're just asking, you know, we can expect uh, food price spikes and uh, perhaps even food shortages if things don't uh, improve uh, abruptly. So let me continue right on where I was, where I ended in the last, in the previous video. Okay, farmers are using Twitter to document the disaster effects of, of climate change. This is a percentage of corn planted minus the five year average. So, you know, there's like very, very little planting, you know, huge losses or huge delays in the planting compared to other years. And it just goes on and on. And this is the Twitter feed, no plant 19. Please ha check it out yourself. Of course, there's always somebody who's doing, you know, a good job at Photoshopping. Um, um, this is a new weed to me, but then again, we normally have herbicides down and in place by the end of, by the end of May, I guess it means. So, well, at least we're getting, you know, a nice looking weed. If you gotta get a weed growing in your field, at least it's a pretty one. Um, this obviously doesn't work too well. Um, it's so dry, you know, the, the mud, things are just bogged down and not being able to move at all. But at least the windmills, the wind turbines are generating power. Um, you know, lots of farmers do generate some revenue from wind turbines, which is very, very important to offset what happens when they lose so much revenue from their their planting. This is a prevent plant meeting, um, you know, corn, soybeans, you know, meetings are packed with farmers wondering what's going on. You know, water, you know, many fields uh, look like lakes almost. Days left to plant corn before the final planting date, right? So it all depends on the price after, if the price starts going up. I think a lot of farmers will start, will plant actually after the um, traditional final planting date, you know, if conditions are conducive to that, if things dry out a bit, because, uh, you know, I don't see how increase, large increase, price increases aren't going to occur. So, you know, even planting, um, things are changing. So, you know, there's, what's the final planting date? This is a traditional number or a number, um, you know, a number that is accumulated, that, that is based on accumulative data, you know, many, many, of many, many years, but this is not, an, this is a totally exceptional year. Okay. Um, Okay, zero acres on the ground in central Illinois. Will we ever catch a break? You know, rain, rain, and more rain. Okay, so uh, plant19 is another, hashtag plant19 is another um, one, another another 
uh, source of lots of information on this. Here, here's this person saying, trying to plant 240 acres of corn in southern Illinois. Conditions were perfect to plant 50 minutes earlier. This keeps happening everywhere. This is the U.S. Uh, corn planting progress, the percent planted. Um, here coming up, here we are, you know, approaching the end of May. You know, we're just off the charts here. This is uh, planting progress, percent planted um, for given years, um, for many different years, and we're, we're just completely off the charts here. Um, I showed you a similar image to this. This is one of these is for... Um, this is for, uh, corn and this is for soybeans. So, you know, Illinois, Indiana, Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, Missouri's down here for corn. Whereas for soy, you know, there's a different mix a bit, but we're way, way down, way, way down. Okay, um... I showed you this plot in the last video. Corn, U.S. corn and soybean acres left to plan on May 26th. So record levels here, you know, and this is previous years. So those charts are generated every single day. You know, at what point can we start talking about yield impacts on corn that is in the field? This was the last field we planted on April 25th. Okay, so, you know, even being able to, even fields where people, farmers have been able to plant the growth, you know, they're, they're saturated with water. Some of them have turned into lakes and, you know, that really stunts the growth of, of uh, you know, and yields are going to, your yields are going to plummet. There's no, there's no question. Um, the corn, the specific corn hashtag, um, most of these images you've seen, but I go. Th I like to go through them all to see, um, you know, get some new information. Here's some. Okay, so this is, uh, you know, this was a Twitter survey. What percentage of your corn crop have you planted since last Sunday, May nineteenth? Fifty-seven percent, zero. Six. You know, most people haven't planted. Okay. Um, this is, uh, you know, there's some financial information on prices and things, break-even prices for prevented planting. You know, uh, is this, uh, this is some futures on corn, you know, coming up here. You know, very, very high prices. This is the, there, there is this fall armyworm in corn crops in, in uh, China. Okay, um, China's found destructive armyworm in corn crops. Destructive pest has spread to 15 provinces. Um, China has 130 million hectares of arable land at end 2017 and grows corn on about 42 million hectares. So, you know, it, if this thing spread like crazy, this could be a huge issue for, for China. Um, Okay, so there's lots of stuff here. Um, this is for soy. Of course, we've had the uh, tariffs on soy. And, uh, you know, China's no longer buying, has put U.S. soy purchases on hold as tariff war escalates, right? This is something, you know, the, these tariffs are, it's like shooting yourself in the foot, really. Um, how many acres are you know it it just goes on and on like it just goes on and on if you look at wheat you know you can get the hashtag for wheat same sort of thing you know prices and some financial charts and stuff and you know uh okay different uh stuff this is uh may 21st in nebraska in the high plains snow Affecting the crop. Uh, the board of options trade for wheat, showing the patterns of the prices. Okay, um, so it does. It just um, it continues on and on. Uh, this is hashtag food. You know, there's some stuff on there, but um, it's mixed with a lot of other things. Okay, so so basically, um, and this is my uh, you know Facebook uh, page. Um, 
There was an interesting thing. Will climate change cause humans to go extinct? It went to the conversation. You know, good uh, Australian online blog. And, uh, you know, lots of people... Ba- basically, there's, it, it was an interesting article. But, you know, what have I talked about in my videos in the past about food? So if you just go to my YouTube channel... You know, Google YouTube Paul Beckwith or Paul H. Beckwith YouTube. Come to my channel and then you can actually do a search. So I'm listing, I'm sorting all of the videos by date. So these are the most recent ones going back. And you can search for topics. So if you search up here, of course, it searches through all of YouTube. But if you're in my YouTube channel and you go and do a search here, for example, for food... Okay, hit enter. Okay, so these are videos where I've talked about food uh, supply. So food supply threats from ongoing catastrophic flooding in the U.S. Midwest. I talked about that a month ago. Food disruption, climate change, and ocean sources of food. This was from several years ago. Um, There was, uh, you know, a three-part video on food disruption from climate change and... uh, you know, how we get we can get more and more food from the oceans. Um, but there is more and more food from farming on shore, you know, near shore farms. Global food shocks from climate disruption. Okay, so four years ago. Overpopulation. You know, as you go further down, it becomes less relevant to the food. Here, um, suck CO2 out of the atmosphere and oceans with algae. You know, if you were to do that, then the zooplankton eat the algae, and you can get a proliferation up the trophic food chain in the ocean, and uh, we can get lots of food for the planet, and so on. So there's lots of stuff here. It does it in terms of relevance, so food's in the title, so these ones are picked first. So the indexing of all of them, I've done numerous videos, as you know, on many, many different topics um, through the years. And uh, so if you're wondering if I've done a video on a certain topic, just go into my YouTube channel and do a search, not through YouTube overall, but do a search using the magnifying glass here, right in your topics. Like, you know, if we want to look at Antarctica, for example. Right, you can get all of the videos, and I actually use this myself to say, see. Okay, well, I haven't given, you know, I haven't. Uh, it was ten months ago when I for, when I last talked about Antarctica, you know, specifically about Antarctica. Um, this was three months ago, and so on. Right, so I say, okay, it's raining in Antarctica a year ago. Okay, well, it's time to do a video. You know, we can't forget about our friends in the uh, southern hemisphere. Okay, so. Basically, and of course, uh, you know, this is my, um, this is my blog, uh, paulbeckwith.net. So please uh, check that out. And again, if you've donated to me at any time, you know, in the past, I, I thank you. I'm not the um, best person, you know, at, you know, I deeply appreciate these donations. It really helps me, you know, it allows me to, to do all of these videos and to do all of this work to keep you up to date on all of the changes in abrupt climate change and to let you know uh, where where we're heading. Um, And everybody that does, that has donated to me, whatever the amount, um, does get a personal email from me thanking them, but, you know, it can be greatly delayed. um, And that's something, you know, I can try to work to be a bit better at, but, um, you know, I I do, I do uh, so many videos and stuff that, you know, I need to, increase the um, priority on, you know, thanking people because the, any donations are, are greatly appreciated. So, so basically, you know, in summary for this video, you know, we've, we've had, uh, you know, Twitter, I, Twitter is a, 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 a very, very useful, you know, almost invaluable tool for ongoing um, crises like this uh, planting you know, you can, there's all of these hashtags, uh, no plant 19, plant 19, hashtag wheat, hashtag soy, hashtag corn, hashtag food, hashtag plant 19, hashtag agriculture, hashtag ag USA, etc., where you can get information on what's happening. So thanks for listening.